Welcome to the School of Wedding Photography. I'm here with Andy Gaines. Andy is a wedding photographer based in the UK. He won Best Wedding Photographer in England according to the National Wedding Industry Awards. He was a 30 Rising Stars um, by Rangefinder, Junebug Best of the Best, Best Wedding Photographer by Masters of Wedding Photography, and has won numerous uh, Fearless Awards. How are you? Dude, you, yeah, I'm good. You're making me sound quite impressive. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was listening to that thinking, wow, this guy sounds Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, they, I mean, they're, they're all good things. But, you know, as you said, um, it's what your mum says that's the most important thing. My mum thinks I'm a big deal. Yeah. And my grandma, you know, for, for her, that like I can do no wrong. So yeah, well, pretty much if grandma's, if grandma's happy, then, you know. Yeah, world's right. All good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I made it. Um, now, I, you trained as an astrophysicist. How did you make? Did. The, how did you make the leap to wedding photography? In a very, very roundabout, long-winded way. Um, okay. Yeah. So I went to uni to do astrophysics. Yeah. Which is ridiculous now, and I think back. But hey ho. So why? I, no, I, I why, why is it ridiculous? Because. Look at me. I don't know. Like just my, my life, my life before and after just feels nothing like that. Yeah. I mean, so I went, I went there. Um, mainly, I was like the, I was like the first child in our kind of family who to go to university. You know, like the first ever. And I think obviously by my parents' generation, yeah, that was a big deal. You yeah. know, and I said they'd never had that opportunity. And then that, obviously I was quite good at school, uh, so it was like. Oh, you can get to get, you know, you can have this opportunity to go, which is great. And yeah. it was an amazing experience. So I kind of, I was good at maths. So I just ended up kind of, and into physics and ended up doing the astrophysics thing. Yeah, right. um, but bet- between you and me <laughs> and the rest of the internet, yeah. I didn't do that, I didn't do that much work when I was there. <laughs> Why? But I, but I did have a great time. Uh, so, yeah, no, so, I, so I did, I did astrophysics. Um, but then the thing, when it, the thing that got me to weddings really was was not for a while after. So at uni, I was I had some friends I was in a band with, and when we finished university, play, we were playing music. And we were like, well, we didn't want to didn't want to get a job like a, a graduate job at that time. The, the three of us didn't really have any plans, so we took like a gap year. We were like, let's take a gap year out and yeah. play some music. Yeah. And then the gap year kind of turned into like a gap decade um, of just avoiding the real world and being in a band. And and, and really, and so I spent a lot of my twenties doing that. And it wasn't until really that. Like I met my my wife and we had our first child. That I kind of started to get into weddings. And, yeah, okay. Or get into photography. Like I'd always been into photography, but never really considered it. And then obviously when our like our first daughter was born, started taking more pictures of that. Uh, and then you know one thing kind of led to another. And yeah, okay. Here I am. Were you shooting when you were in the band? No, not really. So yeah. I used to have a camera. Like my granddad had given me a an old like film camera. Yeah. Um, like you know, thirty-five mil, like a pen, a Nikon Pentax Canon. One, well, you know, it's an old one, it's a yeah. manual thing. So I used to, I used to take the, like I knew how to take pictures, yeah. but beyond that, like not not really, you know. I knew how to like, you know, expose and stuff, but that was that was really it. Never yeah. really. Um, it was always like a, a, something I've been into a little bit, but not never considered it ever. And then the the, the truth of it, which is which is, uh, I kind of I was telling this story yesterday, in the workshop that I ran. The truth of it is that I actually got I got into weddings to make to like. For the money, which is yeah. which is ironic when I think about it. But I had a friend of mine who who, who I was a friend of from school, and I went to I'd not seen him for years, and he was he met this girl, and I went to stay with him, and he was seeing this girl at the time, and she was a snowboard photographer in the winter for like a snowboard magazine, and then in summer she'd come home and she was shooting weddings to kind of feel like yeah, and he was like, oh man, you know, mate, you want to check out my girlfriend that I'm just seeing, like you know, she started photographing weddings, and at the weekend she went off and did a wedding on Saturday. She made like two thousand pounds for a day's work, yeah. and I was like, "Wow!" Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, was like, I, my I was like, "No way!" I was like, "Kaching!" Yeah. Like, I was like, "Man, I'm gonna work three hundred days a year, two thousand pounds a day." I was like, "Doing all this math, I was like, I'm there. Like, that's a career for me." Um, and and I spoke to her, and she was like, "Yeah, well, you know, you could, you've got a, you've got a camera, like, you could maybe do it. Like, you're a nice guy. You're not a weirdo." Yeah. And so it just kind of went from there. Like the seed was planted for that reason. Yeah. Okay. Started getting into it, and then obviously it turns out it was not really, <laughs> wasn't quite like that. And you know, and I kind of, but I got like once I got my teeth into it, I was just really, you know, I loved it from the word go. Really. Like, yeah. What did you love about it? I love. I loved. I just love the 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 initially 
well, it's funny. So initially, like, I was drawn. So when 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 I when she, when I thought about shooting weddings, and my sister was getting married, and I was like, right, I'm going to be a wedding photographer. I'm going to shoot your wedding, and I'm going. So when I got into it, and I started finding the work of all the people at the time whose work I really liked. The thing that I loved about a lot of that work was that it was different to old school wedding photography, right? Yeah. So I kind of the stuff that I really loved when I started, you know, these epic pictures or people being hipster and doing weird stuff, and you know, like skulls over their faces and people stood looking moody in fields and all this kind of shit. And I used to, I loved that. <laughs> but I think the reason I loved it was because I think, you know, it was like the frustrated punk rocker in me from being in a band. It was like, this is really cool. And I think this is really cool because it's the sort of stuff that my mum would hate. Yeah. So yeah. this is not, you know, this is not like what you think is going to be good. So I'm, you know, that, I really drawn to that. But obviously, so I kind of spent a long time when I started basically just playing at being you know, really, I was looking back. I was totally floundering. I was basically just playing it, trying to be cool, yeah. or what I thought cool in the t in the world of wedding photography. Yeah. But it was only after shoot for a few years and a few kind of events, um, and, and working with some other photographers and like having my eyes open a little bit that you start to realize, hang on a minute, like, you know, come on, Andy Gaines, you've just been messing around for a few years <laughs> trying to kind of impress other photographers by making stupid photography. What yeah. I think was a bit ridiculous. You know, the stuff I was doing at the time, I was a bit like. Mm -hmm. Whereas once you started to really get into the power of the wedding, of the power of what wedding photography can be, you know, and of the like, the legacy that you can create for people, and the real, you know, the real stuff you can do with it, and the important moments you can capture. Once that started to, to click, after maybe shooting for a year or two, like really, that's what I've been. That's you know, that's kind of what I'm into now, as opposed to the style kind of stuff. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um... I read something you wrote a while ago, uh, I think it was an interview you did, where you said that uh, there was a moment where you sort of realized this is a service industry um, and uh, that the focus should be on the clients, not on creating sort of impressive photos for other photographers. Yeah, for sure. Like that, that, that kind of, yeah, that's what I was saying. It was yeah. like, I mean, you know, I have this discussion with some of my friends all the time, you know, and it's always like, what we're making is we're making we're an, we're an artistic industry you know it's art we're creative and there is an element of that but i think ultimately you yeah we're just we it's, it's just, i feel it's just almost entirely a service industry like we're just providing a service for people yeah um and it's an artistic service yeah but ultimately i, I think i found i've kind of come around to this that you know there's like you have the ego of the photographer and you have the empathy with with the clients and I think there's always that kind of battle. It's like, well, there's the artistic ego in me, which is, you know, I want to, this is really deep, dude, for the morning. This is like nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like nearly 9 p.m. here. So I'm like, I'm right into okay. deep stuff now. So I, I'll just put you to sleep with this. And then you get to <laughs> but no, no, so like, yeah, I mean, this is all pretty like existential stuff. But for me, there's like, there's the ego of the, of the artist and you've got the empathy for the client. And I think that there's often a, like a rub there because we want to make our art and we want to do our thing and we want, we have our vision that we want to kind of achieve as artists. But I think with wedding photography, and I think that's great from a, an artistic point of view, but from, for weddings, it's like, like, fuck that. I just think, like, for me, I, I've kind of found now and the way I've, like, my work has evolved and my approach has evolved is that, like, I, I've got the artist in me, and I know what I like, and I know what I want to do, and I know what when I go somewhere, the sort of stuff I want to make. But I found that if you if you focus 100% on the empathy aspect, and you put the client on who they are, and what they want, and what you can go, do for them, like at the total center of everything you do, um, that you can totally, totally deliver to them 100% on that. And I think I read this really good, obviously, I'm really, I'm really into music, and one of my favorite... Uh, Singer songwriter is a guy called Ryan Adams. And if you, yeah. Ryan Adams is a legend, check him out. Not Brian. Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I read an amazing interview with him where he was talking about the same thing about the, 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 the like the ego of the artist and like, and it's so true. It's like if you've got if you've got that creativity inside, if you've got that like that spark of something inside you, you can put everything into something else, and ultimately the ego is always going to find its way out anyway. Like, you know, you can, so I found that you can focus entirely on the client and, and, and not worry about that because I know that Andy Gaines, the photographer, is going to find his way in somehow. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to make it, the pictures are still going to have me in them. And, yeah. But I found that that will happen even if I totally, by completely putting it to one side and totally focusing on the clients, it still ends up being Andy Gaines. Yeah. And, okay. So then that's and, sort of keeping you, I mean, if the ego, if you're not, 
what am I trying to say? If you're not, um, if you re- if you're just completely focusing on the client, you still um, find sort of creative fulfillment in what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly it. Like, yeah. I think that people, people, I think that the the the, the, art, the art the artistry in the indus, in the industry yeah. uh, <laughs> fears that it's like we're artists. This is what I do. I need I need my portrait time. I need this. Yeah, this is this is how I work. But actually, I think that if you just put that one to the side, I've just found that you just, just shelve all that completely mm. and just knuckle down and work for the couples. Like, yeah, I still find that I'm totally creatively fulfilled, you know? Yeah. I've just, it, because it gets to create the spark in you, the, the art, the ego just always finds its way to work its way in there somehow, with it subconsciously almost, you know? And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it comes out. So deep. Yeah. <laughs> Let's lighten the mood. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, where did you get the hat? I literally bought the hat from the Shaka Pin in Clarksdale, Mississippi. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's safe to do. It's my most favorite place in the world. So, uh, so a good friend of mine, Adam Johnson, who's a photographer in the UK, amazing yeah. photographer, and who who runs Nine Dots with me, which is a kind of training uh, education thing we do here. Yeah. And uh, for photographers, and uh, so yeah, me and him were super lucky last year. He booked a wedding in New Orleans uh, on some date, and I booked a wedding in New York like a month later. Yep. So we managed to like block out that like three weeks and, and road trip and shot the wedding in New Orleans and then road oh, trip nice. to like the deep South I... to the wedding in New York. Nice. Basically like <laughs> but for me from coming from like, like a kid who was super into the blues, like the blues music, yeah, it was yeah. like a, the life on like driving highway 61. So yeah. poor Adam Johnson basically just got bumped on behind and I was like, right now we're going to this town. Now we're going to visit this place. And he was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, now now the hat's gonna surgically attach to my head. It comes it comes off at weddings though. It's, it's, you know, uh, maybe not in Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, so I can book one back there. I'll keep it on. Yeah. <laughs> um. So when did you actually start uh, photographing weddings? What year? How long ago? Yeah, so it was two thousand and maybe eleven. I think I shot my first one in two thousand and eleven, which was okay. my sister's wedding. Um, Okay. Which I just did for free. you know the usual things. Did it for free. Completely yeah. winged it. Yeah. Then got going. So like 2012 was like kind of my first half year. And then thir- thir- 2013 and 14 and, and 15 was like well, you know when things kind of took off really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how how do you think the industry sort of changed in that time? So from when you started to where it is now. Um, I think. You know, I think that I think the main thing is just the the main difference at the time. I think when I started was that there was there was so little resource out there for wedding photographers. Yeah. I know that a lot of people complain that now there's loads of so many wedding photographers, and I don't know. I mean, maybe that's true. Maybe there are more now than were then. I'm not sure. Um, you know, people talk about it being really difficult now to get established if you're trying to start, whereas back then maybe it was less so. But I, Maybe there's some truth in that. I've not, I've not seen that myself particularly, but yeah. I mean, the main thing I've seen is just a lack of resource. Because so when I started in whatever, 2012, you know, and I was trying to learn how to do stuff and work out how people did things, and, and there was just nothing. Like, there was just, it was so hard. I remember, like, you know, you, you were trying to search in forums and you were looking on, there was just no kind of, mm. still, was very few kind of events or conferences or communities. And now, there's just tons of that stuff, you know, and if you want to learn how to, I, I can remember sitting, like taking images of people whose work I liked and bringing them into like Photoshop and bringing my images into Photoshop and spending days thinking like, what have they done to make the colors look like this? You know, yeah. like literally like maybe it's a curves up, maybe it's curves down, maybe it's, maybe I changed it. Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> you know, but like literally <laughs> days, like I was like, how can I make... But now you can, you know, there's, then there was a Visco, so then it was like everyone, you know, there was all, then those presets were built and people buy those, and now there's, you know, so it's, that, that's the main thing I think, you know, and everyone yeah. is really training now. So if you want to learn something, you can just go on anyone's workshop or see them talk at a conference or get their information online. You know, that's the main thing I think, which I think is good. You know, I think it's, it's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, that kind of leads me onto Nine Dots. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So that kind of problem I just described, yeah. I am basically it. Solving. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so and nine nine dots um, is a. It's a, like basically it started off we about three or four years ago. We, we the four four of us in the UK decided we to put on a workshop. We were friends and we knew it. You know, we knew each other from the UK. Yeah. Um, 
and we got together and we were like, we wanted to put on a workshop. So we did a workshop, the, the, the four of us, and that kind of sold out, a two-day thing. And so we did another one. And it was, you know, it went really well and people really got into it. And the kind of community that formed after that, just in the Facebook groups and things from, from what we'd done, led us to put on a conference. Um, so we did the, the, the Nine Dots Gathering, the first one about three or four years ago, 2015. Um, which was amazing, really. So that was like a real punt. So in the UK at the time, there was nothing like no events, no conferences or anything like that. And we were just like, man, it'd be good to put on a conference. Like if we if we could put on a conference, who would we want to hear speak? Yeah. You know, that was how it's like. So we said, well, we'd love to see what these guys are going to say. Love to hear her. Love to you know, pull out this list of like eight names and message them with this ridiculous idea. Look, we're thinking about putting on this weird event. That do you, are you interested? And literally everyone was like, yeah. And yeah. we're like, amazing. So the first one we had like. Ben and Aaron Crisman over, um, nice. Tyler working. We had two man studios. We had Spencer Lum from Ground Glass. We had, you know, it was, it was like all these people who we just, you know, we loved just came over, and it, and it went so well that it's kind of grown from there. So yeah. we did workshops and more, more, more gatherings the next couple of years. Then this last year we've kind of moved more into that kind of online education. So now it's like for the community we've built like an online membership. So there's online, we're, we're providing online tutorials and all that kind of stuff. And okay. Similar to like what you're doing, what a lot, what a lot of people do, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just cool. really like trying to, just kind of be able to kind of give things back to the community that we've created, you know, which is yeah. which is something that I'm really, you know, I think I know a lot of people are, you know, it's, for me it is really much about, we say it a lot, but it's like community over competition. I know there was always, I think that's something that has maybe changed. I think when I started, there was, it was did feel like a bit of a closed shop. Yeah, and it was a lot of people who were very guarded about what they did and how they did it. Whereas I think our our approach and our ethos within with Nidox is like, well, you know, if you take any kind of any kind of industry, like say the UK wedding industry, if we can make all the photographers in the UK better and we can make them charge more because they're better, and everyone can push their average price of UK wedding photography up by a thousand pounds or whatever, then like everybody wins, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the goal, really. Um, so just empower everybody to be better, you know? Yeah. So yeah, so that's yeah. it. And so it's an online resource? These yeah, days? So it's, it's, it, yeah, so it's, we do, it's all sorts of things now. So we, we, okay. we run events, so we've got like, we've got the, uh, the Gather, which is like a three day event. We've got um, the, bah, 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 bah. we've got a, like a one day event coming up. We do workshops still and lots of, okay. lots of in-person stuff. Yeah. Um, but then also, yeah, we've got like a, an online, like members area now. So if you become a member, you can access stuff and you can join the community and you can get hold of like tutorials and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, just while you were talking there, I was thinking back about what you were talking about earlier about um, ego versus empathy. And I, can you just explain a little bit more sort of the, the practical side of the, of the empathy? So, you know, what what are you talking about? Are you talking, how is it forming this relationship with the client? Is that sort of yeah. getting so to know I mean, them? Yeah, so I think it's basically like, I think, yeah, so obviously empathy is empathy, like yeah. just put it in yourself in shoes and, 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 you know, understand how they feel. So I think, like for me, that that's just the key of doing everything well. And I think the key, the way we can best serve our couples as, as wedding photographers is to deliver them images that affect them on a, like a deep, profound level and that we'll be able to do so for years and years and years to come, you know? Okay. So I think... Those kind of images for me are nearly always going to be documentary, like real moments, Im yeah. images of them and of the people that they care about the most. Um, and I think as wedding, so I think as wedding photographers, we, we get bogged down in, in two things. We get bogged down in making epic portraits, quote unquote. And while there's nothing wrong with epic portraits and they've got their place, I think that they don't they don't fulfil what I just described as a as a thing. I don't think they can do that in the way that. A great moment of someone you love can yes you know yeah um and ditto for um so yeah the, the, they don't do that and i think the other thing that we get bogged down as wedding photographers is are just generally the bride and groom so i think for me wedding photographers are obsessed with brides and grooms which makes sense because it's the bride and groom's day right but if i think back to if, you, if i think to what people want and when i think when you speak to when i speak to most of the people who inquire with me who book me they're not so bothered about a, a thousand pictures of them looking pompous and posing throughout the wedding day. What they really want are pictures of other people, you know, mm. of their mums, their dads. And she wants pictures of him and he wants pictures of her. Yeah. And she wants pictures of her friend, you know. And, and, I, and I kind of realised that when we're making photographs of people, you're not really making the photographs 
for the people in the photo, you know? Like, so if I take a picture of the bride's mum on the wedding day, or the bride and her mum, the picture of the mum is not for the mum, it's for the bride, you know? Yes, and, yeah. And I, find, and I find as well that, that you know, so, so and, and, and kind of learning, like understanding that, and then being able to go into a wedding with that in your mind, is that you start looking for the relationship between people and how these people feel about each other. So it's not just about, well, here we are, here's a bride getting ready, for, you know, just a standard scene. Here's a bride getting ready. How can I make a picture of her looking great? Like, park that to one side for a minute and be like, well, what does she feel about the people in this room? And what does she feel about herself now? And, and what are the relationships with all the people here? And how, how can I how can I provide an image that, that brings that out? So in 50 years' time, she can look back at that and be say, say Never mind, like, oh, here's me on my wedding day. It's like, here's me with the three best friends I have in the world. And this picture is exactly who they are. Like, that is her. And that is our relationship. And that is how we felt, you know. And I think trying to deliver that as opposed to all that other photography stuff, for me, is like the core of that. And I think being able to do that, yeah, like you say, comes down to the lead up to the day and how we work with our couples and what we ask them and what we find out about them. And it comes down to on the day, being able to go in there and park the photographer to the one side and just go in there as a human being and be like, right, who are these people and what do they mean to each other? And how can I yeah. distill that down into a photograph, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like you're documenting I mean, the relationships. Yeah. Like it, for me, it's just documenting life. Like the, the wedding yeah. is almost like a, a pointless. It, the, like weddings are stupid. Weddings are, are ridiculous events. But the, the great thing about them is that they bring everyone that's important together in one place. Yeah. Yeah. in an emotionally charged day that that really is the best place to capture that you know yeah um, like yeah. And, and it was interesting like so we, we started going back to our couples uh, like after the wedding like a year down the line or two years down the line and saying cool how, how you know how, how are things what are the best pictures what are the most the, your favorite pictures from the wedding day and it's amazing to get to hear what they have to say about that when they they say well you know there the are brides who are picking photographs like, this is my favorite picture of the day and, and one of my favorite ones is that there's a picture of the bride laughing and looking frankly ridiculous, yeah. you know, and they're having a moment and he's laughing and she's laughing. She's out of focus and not looking particularly flattering, you know, yeah. she's like, and I was like, why do you like this picture? She's like, just because that's us. Like, yeah. that's my husband. And that is exactly our relationship. And I was like, yeah. you would, you would you would barely even, that the image would barely even pass the cull for a lot of people, you know, you would delete that, mm. a lot of photographers. Mm. But she's like, this is the best, this is my favorite picture of the day, because it's just who we are, like distilled. And yeah, I think remembering that when you're making these pictures, you're not making it for the people in them, I think is, is super important, you know. Yeah. A lot of photographers will say, you know, like, you can't deliver that image, she'll hate it. It's, like, yeah, it's not for her, you know, it's, it's her mom, you know, that because, to, you know, having known these people and got to know them and known how the relationship is, like, when mum looks at this picture, I know what she'll see in that picture. And it isn't, mm. it isn't a bride, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little girl or yeah. whoever, you know. Yeah. 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 So just basically that, I think. <laughs> That's a long-winded answer, you know. Yeah. How did you sort of, I mean, how did you kind of realise this? Because it's not, is this not the most common thing that I hear from people? Uh, when I'm interviewing them. So how have you kind of got to this point where you've realized it? I think, I mean, there was a few things that happened. Like I had um, one of the, the big things fairly early on that happened. Um, so I had a, when I was still, when I was still in my, um, like, uh, you know, trying to be hipster, yeah. <laughs> my try hard to, my trying hard to impress with the photographer's phase, which is yeah. like, if I'm holding my hand, well, that's what it was. Like, yeah. it was like, I saw these pictures that I thought were cool. It's like, well, how can I make pictures that other people will think are cool? You know, other photographers. You know, when I was in that stage, I had a couple that early on who who booked me, and I was trying super hard to make trendy, cool images, and they were just wanting to mess around and, and not interested in that. They just wanted to have fun, and it's like, no wonder it was their wedding day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and 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 I, and I can remember coming home from that wedding and being like, man, I've really bombed. I've not been able to make my cool hipster art or whatever. Um, and then it was really tragic. And then, and so the groom for that wedding was tragic. He was killed just the day after his wedding. Oh, yeah. The, the, so the day after the wedding, he, he'd gone home and he had it in a, a like road traffic accident and That's died. Right. And, and yeah. when she got back in touch, she's like, look, we need some images, you know, this week. And I was like, well, sure. Why do you want them this week? And she's like, well, it's, we need it. We've got a funeral to plan for, you know, when, yeah. when, when you send her the pictures and she started choosing those images, you know, it's like, 
you re- like you start to see what you know. So that that for me was a big like eye opener. It's like fuck, like yeah, yeah. And obviously that's it's a, that's a crazy tragic one in a million extreme, event, yeah. But it's but you know that happened. So that 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 like a, was a bit like wow. But also just I think it's living. I think and getting older and having children and seeing the kids grow up and and just paying just being more aware of, of you know like life yeah. rather than like stepping out of the wedding but I mean the problem with the wedding industry is it's, it's it's a bit incestuous and there's so much you know you can lose your, you know it's like the old adage isn't it you, you know don't you know you can sit there desperately trying to cool your own work then you jump on Instagram and it's just like epic epic boom <laughs> boom and then you go back to your terrible wedding that you shot in a registry office where it looks bad and you're like, no, I'm, I'm so shit. And the whole, like, comparing your highlights, no, comparing everyone else's highlights to your cutting room floor, mm, you know, like, mm. and it's so easy to do that. And I kind of made, I've, I, in the, over the last few years, I've made a real conscious effort just to, to not, to not get sucked into looking at that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think just doing that and just, you know, like, just like having, you know, like, just realizing your own, like, mortality and watching my children get older and, and just seeing my parents get older, it's all these kind of things that you think about that yeah. you start to realize the kind of real deeper, yeah. like the deeper importance that what we do can have, you know? Yeah. And, and also, also just, just learning from other photographers that, I mean, I'm not talking about, any, everything I'm saying is not revolutionary in any way, you know, there's a, there's a thousand other photographers who feel the same way as I do and do that really well, but just spending more time with people who share this kind of view and you're like, yeah, people yeah. like a, Tyler working or we are the Parsons and those kind of guys who've just got a similar approach to it and I'm just like it just resonates with me you know and it's yeah. just become more it's just what I've kind of tried to focus on and knuckle down and do you know yeah yeah do you think um did having kids change your business yeah, yeah I mean so I, it's weird like we had a our first child when I started really so I've, I've always I've only ever shot when I've been a parent I've never really been uh, okay. a photographer okay um yeah. when, when I wasn't but I genuinely don't think I could do this job as well as I do if I didn't have kids. I think, and that's not to say people without kids can't be amazing photographers, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. You know, but, but, but yeah, I think that being a parent means everything because I think it allows you, well, it just gives you that extra, like, door into the empathy thing because you walk into, like, I, you know, and I think you've, you've got to bring yourself into your images, like I was saying. I think the, the, the ego always finds a way in. Yeah. And I think that, for me, when I walk in, I'm not I'm not like a crazy romantic lovey dovey kind of guy. Mm. So, but I am like a dad. So yeah. when I walk into these weddings and I start to meet who sees who's who, like for me, like the father the bride thing is just is such a strong relationship that I'm drawn to. Yeah. That I can't help but it come out in my photography, you know. Yeah. And so for me, yeah. So that is a it's same with mother, mothers of the bride or pet or, or couples who are getting married who have got little kids, you know, like just. Yeah, and, I, and I'm really fortunate to have a great friendship group when I was growing up. So I'm super close to a lot of my oldest friends. And I think so when I see that at weddings and you, I get couples to inquire and when you find out about them and, and for them, the most important thing is the fact that all their best mates are going to be groomsmen and that all the groomsmen, they've been friends since they were five and mm-hmm. they're still best buddies now. Like, when I see that, I'm just like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I really <laughs> gravitate to that. And yeah, so I think, but yeah, the parent thing for sure, I think. Like, mm. and that's, and that's like a good, exactly what I was saying about the whole ego versus empathy, that the ego, your ego always finds a way in, even if you try and park it completely, like, yeah, who yeah. you are, a photographer, always works its way in, which yeah. always makes you more individual. But that only happens if you, if you can really ditch that whole idea of, well, what's, what's hipster and what I'm talking this week, and how can I make pictures look like this guy? Because yeah. if you've got that, if you've got that in the back of your mind, that's all you're looking for, and all that other important stuff. It's just you just don't see it; it just passes you by. Yeah. You know? So do you do you look at wedding photography, or do you completely ignore it? I do, but but I just try not to. Yeah. Basically, you know, I, I don't. I, I you know I follow a lot. I mean, it's great now because wedding photography has been amazing, and the industry has brought me so many good friends and great relationships, and and so a lot of the people that I follow are genuinely people who I like, <laughs> like yeah. as people, you know, the friends who I've met, and and so I love looking at their work because it's great to see them doing well, you know, yeah. as humans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, and I, and I do follow the industry, obviously, with Nine Dots, we're, we're a big part of that, and we're 
we're training a lot of people to become better, so I'm, I'm totally aware, but I just try not to cover, I think, is the thing. I, I, that's the thing that I've learned not to do. I've tried, I try not to, oh, I wish I could do things like that. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, just trying to, I try, I've just tried really hard to get over that, I think. Just do your own um, thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you define uh, being a successful wedding photographer? Uh, well, I don't know. By how much money you can make. <laughs> 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 by how good your car is. Yeah. <laughs> in, which, in, which, in which case, I'm a total failure. Yeah. You want to wreck as far as I have my house. Um, how, no, I don't, I don't know. I think... I mean, I think it's like everything. I think if you just live a happy life, I think, you know, I think it's hard and it's easy. It's like everything, you know, people, it's always easy to say one thing when, when to it in the eyes of other people, you've maybe achieved stuff. So like people talk about awards. When I started out and I, and I first kind of won some awards, like that was just, awesome. I was like, man, I've made it. But when I think back now, the, the only reason that the awards felt good, I mean, it's nice to get the peer recognition, but the awards feel good mainly because I could say to other people, it's like, here's proof that I'm doing okay. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like I say to my mum, it's like, hey mum, look, I've actually yeah. got a proper job now. Yeah. Like, I've actually, you know, <laughs> I, find, I finally like got an actual job because I got an award, yeah. you know, so, so the awards are great and they're great obviously for kind of recognition to help, but, but I don't, I'm not even sure that, that something like that is it. I, I don't, I think if you could just be happy in what you do, I think that's just like a life question, isn't it? I think yeah. I'm fortunate. I found something to do that I love. What I do, it's taken me to some amazing places. It's it's helped bring me some of the like the best friendships I've got in in the world. You know, it's made made friends with some amazing people. Um, and I've, and I've, I actually genuinely believe that I get to do something that genuinely benefits the people I do it for. So yeah. you know, that's kind of success, really. And I'm lucky that it pays me enough money to not get a proper job. Still, yeah. after all these years, <laughs> I've still not got a proper job. Um, I was just thinking if if your focus is on empathy and and on the couples that you have then do you have an idea of um, what your ideal couple is or would it be everyone yeah and again so this is kind of weird like so people a lot of people like a lot of what I said and, and obviously I'm, I'm not I know it's just kind of my opinion and I maybe I don't feel quite as hard line as, as the way I've described it you know about other, this yeah. photography and stuff you know, there's a good argument that says, well, all well and good Andy gains, but there are clients that want what you've described that you don't, that you don't want to do, but they want yeah. that. And that's kind of cool. And I get that, you know, different people have got different needs and they probably wouldn't want to book me anyway, which is totally cool. Um, but I genuinely think that anybody is my ideal client. Like I, I believe that like literally every, every possible human is my ideal client because I think when I if I can describe to them what I want to do and why and how I want to do it, unless they're dead inside, <laughs> they can't not resonate with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that's sad to say, but so yeah, for me, like, you know, people have got the time about, you know, you book your ideal client and you find your ideal clients. And I think like, realistically, potentially anybody is my ideal client and I'm happy to shoot anybody's wedding because yeah. I think that the values that I'm trying to deliver in my photography, the images I'm trying to deliver do resonate almost universally I think which I think is great because it kind of means that I'm happy to you know it's like it's I've got more you know more more bites of the cherry or whatever more market, guess, yeah. yeah 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 um, you mentioned earlier something about uh, whether or not there's more photographers out there in the industry at the moment um, and I guess uh, something that this term of, of a saturated industry, I've heard a lot. Um, and I'm wondering, how do you kind of, how do you think a photographer can uh, stand out? How they, how they can, can they be different and get noticed? Yeah. Either, uh, Brian, you know, for the, from clients I'm talking about, not so much from the industry. I think, I think you do two things. I think you have, well, you have to make pictures that don't look like anybody else's and you have to have to, you have to have a message that isn't like everybody else's. I mean, that's, that's all it is. Or rather, at least your message has just got to be unique to you. I mean, I mean that's the basics of, like, of, of selling, isn't it? You have to fi find what they want and find what they need and then provide like an, a solution that works on like, you know, an emotional level that no one else will deliver. So, yeah. I mean, I think it, it, is, it is hard to stand out. And I think, but yeah, I mean, it's, you, you've just got to be different. 
you've got to say something different and show something different. Even if, and, it's, and it can only be ever subtle, you know, I think, because yeah. we're all photographing the same stuff, right, every week in, week out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think people, I think it's a lot easier to do that when you switch off that what is wedding photography. Because once you get into the whole world, what, what, what do I need to be doing as a wedding photographer right now? Oh, I need to be showing this. I need to be doing this. I need to be taking pictures like this. I need to be editing like this. Because if I go on Instagram, that's what it looks like. I mean, and if you do that, you're just joining, you're just throwing your lot with everybody else, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's easy for me to say now, obviously, because I've been shooting a long time and I've got this like referral base and inquiries coming in. And it's very hard to, to, to it's very hard to do that when you're just starting out and, you know, the, the tendency is to want to be like everybody else. But the only way to do it is to kind of, Find who you are as a photographer. Find out what you've got to say, and hopefully, it's not going to be the same as everybody else. And you can channel that into your work and, and kind of stand out. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you shoot anything other than weddings? Do you do personal really. work or projects? No. Yeah. No, no. That's. Yeah. A, I know I should because everybody I speak to is like, "Here's how you should grow as a photographer. Do a personal project." <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I've heard that so many times now over the last two years. I'm like, I probably should do a personal project. Yeah. Everyone says so, but like, it's weird. Like, I'm, and I don't know whether this makes me like a less of an artist, but I, I genuinely don't have that much desire to pick up a camera when I'm not shooting weddings. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether that makes me a bad man. And I don't know if my artistic photographer friends who may see this will be like, what, what? loser? <laughs> Point up a photographer. But honestly, I don't. And, and it, it goes back to, I think I was saying, like my real drive when I pick up a camera is because I want to make the people in front of the camera amazing images that they're going to treasure forever. Yeah. You know? And like for myself, I, I don't have that much of a drive to create Yeah. outside, outside of that. Um, you know, I, I take a lot of pictures of, of our family, obviously, and, and I do family, family shoots. So I, I do the odd family shoot for friends and I do them for previous couples quite a lot. Um, yeah. Which is great, but but on, honestly, yeah, no, I don't I don't do that much. I don't have time. Turns out that turns out that running a business is quite full, full on, and babies they take up loads of time. Who knew? Yeah. Just life in general. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you that no. before you have them. Yeah, yeah who knew? But um, no, honestly, so I don't. I really don't do that much outside of weddings, and I probably should because it would definitely help me as a photographer improve, and as you can always be getting better. But yeah, mm, 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 yeah, okay. it's what it is. Um, now, I, we, you've mentioned doing workshops. Um, I'm wondering what's, if there was like one or two questions that you hear most often from people, what would they be? Um, yeah, I think how, how do you charge more is always, is always a big one. Or how do, I, how do I move out of my like, you know, cheap market into expensive markets? Um, that's, the, that's always a big one. Um, and man, what's the word people always was asking? Like, is it, I don't think people want to know. Like, really, it's funny because when when you start out, you don't you think you think you you, you think you think the stuff you need to know is the stuff you need to know, but it probably isn't really. So there's always like, how do you edit your pictures or this kind of stuff? Or how do you make you know? Yeah. And a lot of those questions, like, well, I mean, I can tell you, but it's actually completely irrelevant to making better. Photography, you yeah, know, yeah. you often fix, you often fixate on the stuff that's not, that's, that's maybe not. Yeah. Well, so, not, so in that, in that line, what, what, you know, what questions should people be asking you? What do you think are the most important things to be thinking about when you're starting out? How do I make better photos? That's the, the main one. I think, I think people, yeah, I think just the, the I mean, like, and I, I mean, I say this knowing full well that I am not a great, you know, I'm, I'm okay at do what I do, but I'm no, no way like any kind of great photographer in the grand scheme of things, but um, yeah, you, people should should focus 100% on the craft of being able to make good pictures. Because once you can, once you get good at the craft of being able to make good pictures of like light, mo you know, the, the, the nerdy basic composition moment and light, once you can start to know what that means and you can drill that into your subconscious and park it in the back of your brain, then you can free yourself up to start looking for the important the, the moments the important empathy and the, you know you can see that stuff and i think that's that's what everyone should be i think everyone should focus on that you know yeah. when they when they start it's like just the act of how do i make more impactful images like the, the theory of it really 
yeah. and it's not a classroom based subject obviously and it is about people but I think until you really knuckle that down you're never going to make the great moments you're never able to make those great images down the line you know because yeah. you just don't have the the foundations almost to build it on and I was yeah. the same when I started because the barrier to wedding photography is you get a camera and find a friend who's getting married that's literally the barrier so you walk into it really just like well I mean I'm just going to aim it over there and you know tick that box you know or, yeah I walk, I walk to the wedding and there's the people over there, so I should do, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I was like when I started, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's been on your mind lately? It's, well, uh, generally, <laughs> they're probably the, 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 the terrible state of the world that we live in. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the, our, the, our joke of a government and our joke of a Brexit, oh, Brexit and yeah. all that kind of stuff, that, yeah. that kind of shit. Um, <laughs> Sorry, sorry to bring the mood down, but uh, <laughs> that kind of thing weighs my mind. Yeah. Um, getting some weddings edited, I've got a few in the queue at the minute, and that's been preying on my mind a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to having some quiet time over this winter. So this, this year has been crazy busy it's crazy so every, every like every year every year i seem to be shooting slightly less weddings which is great and by design you know yeah so this year this year's the least weddings i've shot for ages i think i did 30 ish weddings this year which is less than the year before and so on and so on yeah and yeah i still find myself more busy than ever like i seem to be getting i seem to be doing less and less work and getting more and more busy yeah. so yeah, i don't yeah. know how it's a lot, a lot to do with the travel i think and just general life and nine dot stuff you know as well but so yeah. looking forward to so are most of your weddings sort of travel, involve travel? Yeah, this year and last year was about 50% overseas. Okay. Um, and In Europe or? Ma anyway. Mainly Europe, but some further afield. Yeah. Um, but the, all, all my weddings, like I, I think I did one wedding this year that was local, that I came home, went to and came home from. So every, every wedding is leaving on a Friday, dr driving or flying or training, to a hotel for a few days and back again. So yeah. that kind of that kind of being away like starts to get really tiresome really quick, yeah. you know. And it's it's, it's it's I hate to moan about it because I'm super lucky and super like blessed to to be able to do this. But yeah, like missing weekends every weekend when the kids are at school Monday to Friday like starts to yeah. starts to get tiresome. And, yeah. and especially destination weddings, you know, like I'm terrible for one in multiple languages is a, you know, can I tell, din dinner for one please tonight, you know, it starts yeah. to get a bit like, <laughs> so, but, but yeah, but I, I, but I mean, I love it, I travel a lot and it's great, but it's, I don't know, and that's, that's another thing actually when, when you talk about people asking questions at workshops, like how do I book more destination weddings is mm -hmm. a big thing mm -hmm. and yeah, and you, I get it, but it's, I don't know, grass is always greener, I think, you know, yeah. it's, it's a downside, it's would a you downside do to, would you do more locals if you could? I mean, you can, I'm sure, but would you rather do more locals? Yeah, I think I, I think I maybe will. And next year, I, I am actually I'm doing I'm traveling a little bit less. I mean, it's almost not by design, but it's just the way things kind of worked out. But I'm actually quite excited by it. So next year, there's a few. I've got a few few destinations, but yeah. a few more just local. And it's yeah, I'm looking looking forward to it. I think yeah, changes as changes as good as a rest and all that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. <laughs> Andy, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No worries. It's so good to chat, man. It's been great. Yeah, no, it was, it was good to finally connect. Hope, hope, um, I, we had a few I've false starts across, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I've come across as like not too cynical. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a happy guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, feel like I've just, I feel like I've just moaned for the last hour, but you know, no, man, it's been great. That's really no, cool. no, no. The, the only moan was about Brexit, but that's like completely okay, understandable, that's... you know. <laughs> what a nightmare! What a nightmare! Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, where are you mostly online? Instagram or website or what? Yeah, so I've got a website which is andygains.com. Yep. Um, Instagram, I think, is andy underscore the underscore gains. So andy the gains, uh, which is on Instagram. So in, using in Instagram and the website quite a bit. Um, Facebook, you know. Yeah. Search me out, you know. Okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Thanks so much. Cool, dude. So good to chat. Yeah, you too. See you. Good man.